I started trying to make the most out of the face-to-face -face time with my students. I perceived that it was very valuable, the time we spent uh, talking to each other, interacting in a lab or in a lecture. And I started to schedule uh, certain activities and certain exercises before they came to class and then, most importantly, make them participate in the class. So I gradually started moving in that direction and then I think the term flip classroom applies to that methodology. It's just that you make it a bit more formal. And the other thing that came also into place is that technology appear and offer you now a huge number of tricks and techniques to uh, engage the students before coming to class and therefore it's much more effective, I think. Flipped classroom can be adapted to a wide variety of contexts and even different types of education, both higher, higher education, primary, secondary. The key point here is can you benefit from a session in which you are interacting with your students? And if the answer is yes in any context, then you should explore flipped classroom. In my concrete example, I teach a flipped classroom for 300 students, engineering students, in a uh, lecture theater. So they are sitting there in the, in the room. It doesn't lend itself much to group discussion, I agree. But there are already techniques in there that you can uh, use to engage them. In my case, for example, I, I make them vote. I give them a few options of a question. We discuss a question, we explain it, and I let them first think about it in silence. So you get the, the lecture theater completely silenced with 250 students. Um, then they get to vote. Um, now voting you can do raise your hand, you can do color cards, so they all vote at the same time and you see which color is the, the most frequently appearing, which gives you also an idea of the type of answer you're getting. Is it a misconception? Is everybody knowing the right answer? Uh, then I tell them to look for somebody that voted different from them and discuss or convince each other. So if you voted A and I voted B, some of us is wrong and therefore we need to discuss. So I think the main point is even with a lecture theater with 300 students, uh, you can engage them in some discussions. You just have to be creative and come up with a type of activities that elicit that type of interaction with them. So what I'm showing here is an example or a slice of a flipped classroom course. This is week three. And the way I went about to design this is first think, as I said before, what are your objectives for the session? And I actually write them here explicitly in terms of course that they are familiar for the students, what you should know at the end of this week. And also give precise instructions of what you should do. Now these two sections are common to every week. So whenever the student looks at this document, they know immediately what should be done and what should be known at the end. Now, I meet with my students in three occasions, a lecture, a tutorial, and a laboratory. So let's take a look at the lecture, for example, and the way I organize it, as you can see, very clean distinction between activities to do before the session, five of them, and activities to do during the session. This is a two-hour session. So I schedule four activities for this two-hour, roughly half, a minute, uh, half an hour each of them. The other thing that I typically include is a link in case they want to review or they get a sense that the material that we cover here was not properly um, covered or they, they get a sense of uh, not performing or not getting enough information. So they always can click in here and if we go and look at this, they go into the official material of the course and they got plenty of text here questions, videos, additional material, as you can see. Take a look at this video. The length of the video is kind of short, 12 minutes, almost 13 minutes. The recommended length for flip classroom is around 8 to 10 minutes, so this would be a bit longer. Uh, the videos are done in a way that I am writing on a white piece of paper, and it's only one single piece of paper, and then I provide the link for the document that came out of the video, so students have access to that after they have seen how I created this in the video. After the video, immediately after, they are asked to answer a few questions. And these questions, as you can see, they are part of the text. You don't need to go to an assessment center or you need to submit anything strange. You just come here, try one and grade, and see immediately if you got it right or not. Uh, you want to try again, you click here, uh, again, and if you run out of patience, I want to see the solution, and then you see which one is the correct one. So then after you obtain this information um, about the engagement or the interaction with those questions, you can detect out of several topics that you plan to address in the classroom, which ones students get engaged the most and which ones they engage the least. Or if you look at these questions, you can even detect misconceptions, aspects of a concept that are not clear or that students systematically get the wrong answer. 
and therefore you go prepare to your class and emphasize or clarify or devote more time to clarify that specific aspect. So one of the powerful things, and I believe every teacher would relate to that, is it'll help you to identify misconceptions. And misconceptions are great because that's the way you really improve the learning experience for the students when you solve them. Okay, so my way of planning a flipped classroom starts looking at the objectives that I want to achieve at the end of the classroom. That's very important. So this is a very delicate process, so you have to look at the end. It's a little bit counterintuitive because typically the way we approach uh, the classroom is um, this is the concepts that I need to cover. Um, my personal experience tells me that you have to approach the whole thing upside down. It's more like look at what you want to achieve at the end of that classroom and then work backwards. What kind of activities would be best suited given the fact that I can interact with the students and they participate and they have to talk to each other. So what kind of activities would you like to have there, right? Now, typically for those kind of activities, you'll need some sort of basic knowledge, basic exposure, um, certain notions there. And then you start working backwards again and outlining the type of activities that should happen before students show up in class. So that's my approach, basically. Uh, look at the end first, then look at what you need in the face-to-face -face session and then look how to better support these discussions with offline or online activities that students are supposed to do before they come to class. So from the point of view of the technical requirements to produce this type of material, as you can see, it's a purely HTML format, which I think is, is the way documents and, and the way inform we exchange information is, is happening right now. So it's entirely in HTML. The type of support you need for this is a procedure such that you create the raw material, like the discussion of your, the description of your activities, the figures, perhaps the basic figures, and then this gets all translated into an HTML. It's a website. This is not in a specific learning management system. It's just a set of HTML pages that are automatically generated from this uh, initial material. And then these can be uploaded to any learning management system. All of them support HTML documents. So I think that's the way to, that's a good way to approach it. Balancing the amount of work I found personally is one of the most difficult things. I would even go to the point to say that 99.9 .9 of the instructors, we over-program things. So in summary, for me, the flipped classroom is a transition process. Um, it puts the student in the center. The student needs to participate, has to be actively engaged. And I got the sense that this is the direction we should be going in terms of teaching. Um, we come from a, a scheme in which students are too passive and we need to move to a more, much more participative uh, type of experience. There'll be friction in my experience. Uh, there'll be a little bit of reluctance from the point of view of some students that they want to be left alone. But I think the justification for moving on that direction is that the overall experience is much more efficient, much more rewarding for everybody, and therefore uh, is something that definitely we all need to be embracing.